So, uh, what kind of advice can you give any youngsters out here that are willing to try those blues, bro? Well, basically, like, it's not worth it, bro. You're basically dragging and get you into this, um, like, into this routine where you have to just fucking literally, whatever you do is, like, towards the blues, you know, because then you get sick if you don't smoke them. Um, it's really not worth doing them, bro, because it man, it takes away everything, your family, everything. What kind of withdrawal symptoms do you get? Everything, all of them, bro, like, like I get fever, I get weak, I can't, like, stand up, like, I, I massive, you know, bone pain, like, you know, to the point where you can't, like, everything, if you touch me, it hurts me, oh. and, like, like, a lot of throw up, I can't eat nothing, I just, like, literally lose massive yep. weight and within days and what's the longest you've gone with the with the withdrawal symptoms a, a week a week and the the blues are pretty easy to get yeah and they're pretty uh, right now they're not that easy because there's a lot of like like i, I think like like ratings and stuff that's going on with dealers uh -huh. so it's, you gotta know the people actually to for them to uh sell your blues but there there is some like you know, there's some people that are willing to make their money, and they go down to the like the bus stations and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, like, you no, know, like, you probably get get them if you look like you from out here, you know. And what's the the least expensive blue that you've uh, got? Um, uh, like fifty cents. 15, uh, there's some fifty cent blue, but they're nasty. They're like they're nasty. They just don't get you high. It's just like you lose well, lots of money, you know, like. Right. You suffer from any anxiety or depression? Um, I I think well, I used to I went back when uh, when I was like younger when I was going through the the, the placement thing in the foster shit. Mm -hmm. My grandma died. Uh, they diagnosed me with um uh, with uh, depression and uh, uh ADHD. So basically, like, yeah, I was taking medication for like for like three years, two years, three years or three years, and uh. Basically, I, I, they took them off. I, took, I went off them because I, I got released off of all that stuff. Like, like I was already like a little bit older, and I just stopped using them because I, I just felt like I didn't need them. No, and then there's another thing that is like it was like those pills will make me sleep a lot. You know, it's like I didn't like that. Yeah. So, now you don't use meth at all. Sometimes there was that's I, that's usually how that's basically how I started. Like I would, I got a, like a roofing job. And I wake up early, bro, and I'm not that type. I'm not that type of person to wake up early, right? So some friends at work would like, you know, saying, "We smoke G," and then they like offer me, like they were like, "You can get you going," and I'm saying, "Work, you know, five things and that." And I used meth for like four, four or five months, like constantly, and then and then I got introduced to the blues after that, and then I was like, "Oh, I'm like more like a marijuana kid." You know, I started with weed, so now I like being like chill. Right now, at this point in your life, do you have any desire to get clean? Yeah, I do actually want to get clean, bro. Like, bro, I want to get clean, but like I said, bro, if I, if I get clean, like, I'm not in a position to get clean right now because I try to get clean and then then the, the clean, like, no, like, I got, I got like, problems with, with, like, a stable home and stuff, so I got to be a home, inside home, you know what I'm saying, because I'm going to be in bed for, like, at least, like, a week. And there's going to be, it's gonna, it's, there's, there's times where she had to help me, you know what I'm saying, bring me food to the, like to a bed, like, you know what I'm saying, walk me to a room, walk me to a restroom or something, because I, I couldn't get up. It's time I woke up, like, throwing up on myself and stuff like that. And then a lot of pain, bro. And then, like, right now, like, I'm a guy stable home, so basically, if I want to get clean, I gotta go somewhere where they're gonna let it, basically, like, help me a little bit, you know, like, make, my, make, make, make me food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I, no, I don't got stable home, so I, I can't, I can't really, like, I already said, like, you know what I'm saying, if, if, if any time it happens that I go to jail, this next time, I'm not going to get, uh, I ain't going back. Mm. When you get out, you know, what about you, you Jalen? Do you have any desire to get clean? Oh, yeah, for my kids. It was like, I hate it, but it was like, if you just, like, don't try them at all. Um, I hated, like, the smell of them. I, I really started using them. And um, he'll tell me that he gets withdrawals and he'll he'll beg me for money and I wouldn't I wouldn't let him money. I'd work I'd work and everything. And I tell him, No, like, um, I'm not gonna lend you money, it's still all in your head. No such thing as a withdrawal. 
-hmm. And um, I just like tried them and I, I would throw up and overdose every time I would try them. And so I just started like, I was able to like, um, how do you call it, like, um, I became like, we had like immune to it, like, yeah. Yeah, and um, I just liked the high, and I had um, I, I had postpartum depression. Mm. I lost my baby um, in May, and it's um. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's something that I picked up, and um, that's why like like um, my CPS is like trying to work with me because of my postpartum depression, and like they're trying to help me, and like, they're looking for me, and I've seen them pop up where I'm at, and I and they ask me if I'm. You know who, who they're looking for, and I tell them no. And, but I, I, I am like, this is not a life for me. Like, yeah, that would be a good reason to get clean for your kids, no? Oh, yeah. No, I think I heard you say something about overdose. Yeah. You guys ever overdosed? I did when I started using them for like days straight. What happened with that? Did, did they give you the Narcan? No, I, I wake up to him like, like my, my throat would be hurting for him, blowing into my mouth really hard. Cause he was trying to like I wasn't breathing and I wake up to him crying and I just get a bad headache all throughout the day. And now when you do the blues, are you scared you're gonna overdose? No. No. I'll smoke them and there's some. I know when I don't like them and um, when they don't get me high enough, or I see other people nodding out and I'm not like I don't get as high as that. Like. Right. Now what? Where do you see yourself? Six months to a year from now. Nothing close. <laughs> and this is new to me. Like, I barely came out. And, like I started doing this. Um. And it doesn't bring nothing good to you. Like these problems, you lose everything. Um, it's depressing. Um. So hopefully you see yourselves clean and with your kids, or of course, yeah. you know, working towards being back with your kids, huh? Yeah. I see a lot of people that know me and they tell me, like, this is not you, like, what are you doing? And it's, like, embarrassing and stuff. And... Yeah, like, yesterday I seen this friend and he's not like, hey, like, what happened to you? I was like, like, uh, you lost a lot of weight? And I was like, yeah, I know, bro, I stopped working. Because he used to see me all the time, like, after work, you know, getting on the bus or getting picked up by her, you know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, all dirty, you know, after work, you know, you all dirty, you know, from working and stuff. And then, you know, he, he would ask me for money sometimes, but now I would actually give him a couple bucks and stuff if I was able to, you know? Now, now it's not even like that, bro. It's like, like, I don't even, you know, I used to be happy, you know, of like going to work, bro, because I actually like learning and stuff. So when I learned these, this roofing, how it was really done and stuff, I actually got, I was like excited. So I was like, oh, I, I can, I can do this for a living, you know, like, I could like literally get myself a truck and then um, with some tools and I do this myself. Like when, when she got her taxes income from uh, from our kids this last year, she we actually got a, a little truck, uh, a Ranger from the auction, and uh, and I uh, was working towards that right. But during the that, that stage right there, like I got I got incarcerated. I went to uh, this right here, uh, Pima County, uh, County, Pima County Jail. For like a month, bro. And when, when she, during that month, she actually uh, had to sell the truck because she wasn't working. I was the only one working, so I was paying the part of the bills and stuff, most of the bills. And uh, and wow, well, we couldn't work towards that anymore. You know, like we, we, the, the, the ideas and plans we had with the truck, it was gone. You know, and then uh, and then around that time is when she really started barely using the blues. And I would tell her not to use them, bro, because I'm saying you don't want to go through these withdrawals. Like stop. Like, you know, there's not when she, like, I would tell her not to use them, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? It, it, I, it was like a year, almost, me using blues, and she would never touch them, bro. She would hate the smell, like you said, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even smoke around her, you know? And then, uh, there was this time, like, around Christmas, like, it was like, uh, we lo we actually got our car broke down. And, and basically, like, she was staying at home a lot, and she was, like, bored and stuff, you know? We, we didn't, because most of the time, like, we had her car all the time, so we would literally go to, uh, on the weekends to like take all the babies to eat, go to the McDonald's, this and that. We had a lot of stuff to do, right? So when her car broke down, we were staying mostly at home, mostly at home, mostly at home. And I was the only one going out to work and coming back. And uh, basically, on that one month, I got incarcerated, came back out, and she was like basically doing blues. She was buying off uh, my dudes and stuff, and I, you know, 
I basically, I couldn't, it wasn't like, I couldn't stop her, you know? When she was over those, bro, like, I literally had to keep her alive for breathing for her, bro. And it was like, it was scary, bro. And I just hated it, bro. I hate you, bro. Now, do you guys uh, ever pray? Yeah. yeah. I I learned that in jail. I think my mom a lot. What'd you learn in jail? Praying and reading the Bible stuff. I know a lot about life. All right, now, uh, are you guys okay with me putting this on YouTube? Yeah, you good. All right, bro. Now, uh, are you okay with me praying for you right now? Yes. All right, Heavenly Father, we lift up Rudy and Jay Lynn to you in prayer right now, Father God. We know that you know what they're going through, Father God. We know that you have a plan for them, Father God. I speak life over them. I speak healing over them mentally and physically, Lord. We put in your hands any addiction, hopelessness, doubt, confusion, and fear, Father God. We put it in your hands and we ask you to deal with it, Lord. Show them purpose, clarity, and direction of, a, of the plan that you have for them, Father God. We know that you have blessings for them, Father God. Pray that one day they will surrender, Lord, and repent. And seek you. In your word it says, you will seek me. And when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. And I know, Lord, that uh, one day soon, Lord, they will surrender. We ask you, Lord, to lead them, lead them on that path that leads to salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.